Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at Blazor's navigation and routing. We're going to start with routing and we're going to go towards the navigation. This video is part of a series I'm doing on Blazor, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, just remember to subscribe and ring the notification bell to get notified of new episodes. Blazor server supports a nice way to route a request to different pages within our single page applications. It can look intimidating at the beginning, especially if you don't know how everything hangs together, but don't worry, I'm here to explain everything about routing and navigation. For server side, Blazor provides us with a method, which is the map Blazor hub method. This method will do all the Blazor hub registration for us, so we don't have to worry about it, and by default will also map fallback to a specific page, and that page is the host page. As we will see in the template that comes out of the box, Blazor will create a base route which you can think of as a request entry point and then pass the request through to the appropriate page that needs to handle it. If there isn't a page for that request, then the user will get a 404 page not found, which you can actually customize as we saw in the previous video. The logic for that is located in the app.razor component, which is the component that our Blazor server will use to branch out and create all the other routes declared in the page components of our Blazor application. Blazor will do that for us automatically as long as we use its router component in app.razor. Let's take a look at the app.razor component and see how everything hangs together. So in my application now, I'm going to go to the app.razor. As you can see, we have the router component, which is the only thing in this page. And then we specify the app assembly we want to load routing information from. And then we have two sub components. We have the found and the not found component. The found component, alongside the context, which is the route data, will be used to create a route view, which is where all the route data will be used to provide some context to the pages that we're going to access. The not found one will be used to provide a way to customize the not found page. In this scenario, we'll have a layout view and an error layout. If you want to know more about how this works, we actually explained it in the previous video, so you can click right now on the top right corner of your screen to watch that and then come back here. What's also very important is that the app assembly obviously allows us to register one assembly here to load the information, but if somebody gives you a library and that library has some routing information in there, like pages that you want to register, uh, the router component actually has an extra parameter and that is the additional assemblies. And this does accept multiple assemblies. Let's take a look at that. Let me just move this into a new page so you can see it better. And now in here I can do add and I can add brackets. And in here I can actually provide a new array. And in this array I'm going to load the assemblies I want to load page information from to put into my router. So let's say if my startup was actually in a separate library, I can do this to register pages from that startup assembly in the separate library. Let me just delete that because we don't actually need to do that. But this is how you can do it if you want to. And let's move on. Blazor routing also supports custom parameters. And if you're used to how ASP donor core parameter routing works, then you will be pretty familiar with this one as well. It follows the same angle brackets approach. The only difference is that as of the recording of this video, optional parameters are, are not actually supported. Let's take a look at that. So here I have my counter component and this counter component currently has this route which is forward slash counter. But what I can do is I can modify this a little bit and say angle brackets here and then starting count. And now I can create a new parameter, so a property, which is an integer and I'm gonna name it starting count and I'm going to mark it as a parameter and now with that done I can actually provide this here and I can customize the starting count of this counter. Obviously I will need to do some initialization so I'm going to create an uninitialized method and in here I'm going to say new current count equals starting counts. So when I access the page, it's going to get my starting count value and use it to initialize the current count. If we just leave it as it is, however, Blazor will throw. And that's because Blazor will think that starting count is actually a string. 
The difference between Blazor's routing and ASP.NET Core's routing is that in here, it's mandatory to specify the type of the parameter. So if I now say int, it will know that I'm talking about this one. And it's fine that they're not the same case, they're actually case insensitive. So that should work fine. Let's run this and see how this looks like. So I have my application running and I will manually type counter because if I just go to counter, you'll see that the page is not found. That's because we changed the route. But if I go to forward slash 10, you'll see that my current count now starts from 10 and I can just click to increase that like I would do normally. Of course, the routing doesn't change, but that's different. What if you want this to actually start from zero though? As I said, you don't have optional parameters here. You can't just do question mark like you would do in ASP.NET Core and allow this to be optional. Well, if you only want to make your final parameter in this optional, routing actually supports multiple page routes. This means that I can copy this, make a new line and remove this. And now it will work for both counter and counter for slash starting count. The only little thing I have to fix is say that I'm starting from zero in this parameter. So let's run this and see what we did. So application is running and if I go to counter now, which was 404 before, I can now normally have counter and then zero and then click to increase, but I can also say first last 99 and it starts from 99 as you can see here and then click to increment. So I can have two different page routes and then that's how I sort of cheat my way into having an optional parameter. This actually is a nice segue to another feature, which is in Rezo components, when you have pages like this, you can actually have multiple URLs to access that page. So if I go to my showcase one, I can access it by doing forward slash showcase, but I can access it by doing other thing. I can access it with doing Nick. I can access it with doing chapters and I can access it with doing any other thing I add here. I'm not limited to a single route. Let's actually see that this works. I have my application and showcase, sure enough, is working. And if I do Nick, Nick is also working on the same page. And if I do chapters, that's also working as well. So all these page are valid for this Razor component. And I'm going to delete that because I don't actually need it. And we're going to continue with the other features. There are different types of restrictions that you can use in the Blazor routing, as you can see now on this uh, image, and this is taken from the documentation. I highly suggest you check the documentation out, but most of the types are supported, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, let me show you something else. What would happen if my URL actually contains a dot? So let me change this to showcase me, for example, showcase.me, and I update my nav component to reflect that change here and run the application and see what I'm getting back. So as you can see, the application is running. And if I go to showcase.me, the application is indeed running and the routing looks right. But what if I refresh the page? As you can see now, I'm getting a 404. The page is not found. And you can actually see that I'm not getting the friendly 404 like the page was found but it wasn't found in the routing, it doesn't even get to the router. And that's because dots are actually not accepted in Blazor in URLs. But what if we want this enabled? What if we want to have dots in the URL? Well, there is a way to do this, and it's actually very easy. If we go to the host.chhtml, in the path, this is where everything starts, and then we go in the app component, and we render that, and then the rest happens. But I can actually go here and do the following angle brackets, two asterisks, and say path. And if I save and run now, then if I go to showcase, again, it works. But what if I refresh it now? Refreshing it still works, as you can see. And that's because we allowed dots with a double asterisk and path. The reason why this works is because we said to the router, I want you to match everything after that, whatever that is. Razor actually blends its router with the native support for navigation. It achieves that by providing us with the built-in navlink component. The navlink component, as the name implies, is the link to other pages in our application. It supports a parameter called match, and that's the only custom parameter that you can actually set. And this parameter can have two values, navlink match all or navlink match prefix, which is a default one. As the names imply, the all option will indicate active status when its path matches the entire current URL. 
the prefix on the other hand will be active if just the prefix of the URL is matched. This can have many practical applications in real life scenarios, especially in nested nav links where you can use a combination of the two. Let's take a look at the code and explain it. Here in the nav menu.razor, that's what I get out of the box with a template. Blazor will provide us with this code, which is what you saw on the sidebar of the application. And then we have the toggle nav menu on click function, which is here, which just changes the status of whether to collapse the nav menu or not based on its activity. These are the nav link match all and the absence of them on subsequent ones. So if the route is matched exactly, which is only in the home page, that's why we have this here, then the home nav link will be active. The rest don't need that because imagine if the counter actually has a parameter, for example, you only want it to be active on prefix. If I went ahead and I changed this and I copied this here, then it would be active when the forward slash counter one was met, but not if I have a number. Let's run this and explain it in action. Now, as you can see, the home one, because it exactly matches the path, we have nothing here, is active. But if I go to the counter, now it is active, but what if I put 10 here? It's no longer active because now it's all, not prefix. So because it doesn't exactly match this, it won't show its activity. If I go ahead and remove that, it will show its activity because it will be matching this as a prefix, not as an absolute value. As we mentioned in the dependency injection video, Blazor DI automatically adds a navigation manager class in the DI container. This navigation manager keeps the current navigation state, but also provides us methods we can use in multiple scenarios. Let's take a look at the contents of this class. I'm going to go at any page. Let's just go at the counter and I will do inject navigation navigation manager i'm gonna copy that here and then i can just use this and we can see what's in here there are two properties here the uri and the base uri one returns the current and one returns the base uri and then we have navigate to method to navigate to other ones then we can convert the uri to absolute uris and base relative paths and then the last thing we have is an event called location changed this will be triggered when the location is changed in the navigation and you can use that event handler to do custom stuff as the location changes now just for fun let's create a button where if you click it it takes you to another page so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna change it to a warning and i'm gonna say move me to home so i'm gonna make this method and this will be let's go home and when I click this button, it will take me to the index page, the home page. So I'm going to copy this one here. And I'm going to name it Move Me to Home. And then I'm going to use the Navigation Manager. And I'm going to say Navigate to Home. So let's run the application and see this in action. Here we go again. Application is running. And if I go to Counter, here's our new button. And when I click that, I want to go back to the home page. So I'm clicking it. And here we go. I'm back at the home page using the navigation manager. That's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you'll find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well to get notified of new episodes. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.